I had no idea what was going on at the time and spent a lot of time doubting my husband. This was almost 10 years ago. I was in my 30s and had only recently married my husband. With my husband working so hard even before we married, I expected life with him to be difficult. But he never came home for so long that I felt alone. At first, I tried to let my husband relax at home during the rare times he would be at home. But my frustration grew. I became harsh with him every time I saw his face. My husband would try to soothe me, but if he saw that I was still unsatisfied, he started to ignore me. I wanted him to look at me no matter how busy he was with his work, because we were married. This emotion got the best of me, and I couldn't look at my husband objectively any longer. Whenever I would pick a fight with my husband, he would always say, I'm going to settle down soon, and then we'll go to that island you like. But this never came true. Work is more important than me, isn't it? I said. If so, don't force yourself to come home. I'm tired too, and seeing you so exhausted makes me sad. No matter how many horrible things I said to him, he never took it seriously. And I began to have a nagging feeling that our marriage was coming to an end. Soon after, my husband could tell I wasn't even mad at him and had no feelings for him. I didn't suspect it at first because he worked in a department with many business trips. But one day, I found a receipt and membership card for a hotel near our house in his suit pocket after he came home from a business trip. The receipt indicated that he had stayed at the hotel on the day when he was out of town on a business trip. And he had accumulated points for more than one night. As a successful businessman who could get the job done, my husband was quite popular with the ladies at work. I guess that he had found another woman to be with. Why should I have a hard time when he is enjoying being with another woman? I went out at night in spite of my husband's infidelity and made plans on the weekends too. It was fun for a while, but eventually I grew tired. I was tired of forcing myself to smile and not being able to truly enjoy myself. Perhaps it was finally time for my husband and I to be free. We're both avoiding each other, not facing each other as husband and wife. It would be preferable if my husband was happier with someone other than me. I suppose it's time for me to move on to the next chapter of my life. But this is the husband I used to love until I realized I didn't want to spend the rest of my life with him. It took a lot of guts for me to ask for a divorce. I also wondered if there was really no other option but to call it quits. But it seems that my husband has a new girlfriend. After days of deliberation, I made a decision and sent a text message to my husband's cell phone. Will you come home early today? I need to talk to you. I texted him on his cell phone. I need to talk to you too, and I'll try to leave as soon as possible. He replied right away. I found myself thinking that my husband must not want a divorce, even though I was certain I had made my decision. My husband is also seeking a divorce. Just thinking about it made my heart race so fast that I couldn't breathe. And I struggled to stand. My husband's heart was not with me, it went to someone else. Let's not cry anymore. At the very least, I should end things with a smile. I made my decision and waited for my husband to return home. It was shortly after 9 p.m. when my husband returned home. He'd lost an unexpected amount of weight. His kind eyes and tone of voice remained the same, but there was a gap between us that seemed insurmountable. My husband, who had never been a man of many words, kept looking down and remained silent except for a few words while I spoke. I wanted to end the conversation with my husband in a respectful manner because I felt he was making a lot of fun of me. We were a married couple, albeit for a short time, and we were about to divorce. So why wouldn't he tell me how he felt? I became increasingly angry and began to argue with him. However, my husband remained silent and listened to what I had to say. 
I wanted him to say something, so I told him that I knew about his new girlfriend. He probably thought I was oblivious to the fact. If he knew I knew everything, he would become impatient and make one excuse after another. Hearing my words, my husband looked at me in surprise, then smiled briefly. After a brief pause, he asked, "What you knew?" I said. Strangely, I couldn't help but laugh at his joking tone, which made my husband laugh. And for the first time in a long time, we laughed together. Regardless of the topic of the conversation, I was overjoyed to be able to laugh with my husband like we used to. We were able to talk again after that, which was a strange sensation. Perhaps it was because he found out I knew about the affair. My husband's face appeared to be revitalized. Let's stop attacking each other. I don't want to leave you because I don't like you," he said. My husband agreed to my proposal, and we decided to clean our room and share our belongings so that we could leave at any time. They were all precious memories, but they were all things I wanted to keep hidden for a while. My husband has always been the type of person who uses things he's had for years, but today he hadn't hesitated to throw them away. His grace overwhelmed me even more. Take anything you want; it's all my fault. So this is my atonement," he said when the room was clean and tidy, and we only had each other's belongings. My husband's eyes seemed to well up with tears as he said this. Did he feel sad as he cleaned up the mess? That was very clear to me because I felt the same way. You still have time to think about it, don't you? Let's clean up one step at a time. I decided to take a break for the rest of the day after cleaning up the entire mess. I took a bath to clear my mind. I should be able to get compensation from my unfaithful husband, but it was clear that our relationship had already ended. Besides, I don't want to taint my memories of my husband any further. As I was getting ready for bed after the bath, my husband entered the bedroom. He climbed into bed and gently drew me into his arms. "Hey, this is weird, and I feel bad for your girlfriend," I said. My husband said quietly. Just one more time. I want to be by your side. I stiffened slightly. He was trembling as he wrapped his arms around me. Are you crying? I asked him, but he didn't respond. I noticed that his body was lighter and more bony as I stroked his back. Are you sure you're well? You appear to have shed some pounds. When I said this to him, his body stopped shaking. I've been cutting weight, he said. Pulling his body away from mine, taking a deep breath. Okay, is there anything else I should know? Are you sure you're okay? It had been a long time since I had touched my husband's body, and I was surprised to see how different it looked from before. My husband's physique was always stocky and muscular. Even when he was busy, he enjoyed working out. But he told me, "She likes me like this." I was sad once more. He's doing it for her. Why doesn't he just forget about me if he enjoys being with her so much that he loses weight? I see. Then there's no need to cry because it's the last day, or is it tears of joy? To keep my sadness at bay, I said something sarcastic that I didn't need to say. You're still the same. I like that part of you too. I wish you a happy life from tomorrow. I'll be praying for you wherever you are. My husband said lightly. After saying that, my husband began to snore. He was a man who moved at his own pace until the end. I hope so as well. I fell asleep after murmuring to his sleeping face. I overslept the next day because I had stayed up late cleaning up the room the day before. My husband was no longer in bed when I awoke. When I entered the living room, I noticed an A4 size envelope on the table, and when I opened it, I discovered a bank book and a slew of documents inside. When I removed everything, I discovered that it was related to a marital property. There was also an unusually large sum of money in the bank book in my name, and I discovered the divorce papers in a small envelope. My husband's section had already been filled. So all that remained was for me to complete and submit mine. In a panic, I dialed my husband's cell phone, but it was disconnected because it appeared to have been canceled. I spent several days asking about my husband's whereabouts with his parents and friends, but none of them would tell me. I had no choice but to contact his company, where I discovered that my husband, the workaholic, 
had resigned a few months before. It would have made sense if he made a new girlfriend and left, but why go to such length? Why didn't anyone tell me anything? I've grown suspicious of people, and there appears to be no way to contact my husband. The mental fatigue that had been building up since before the divorce nearly crushed me. My husband had gone to the trouble of arranging compensation for me, and now that I was free, I decided to spend some time in a place I really enjoyed. We arrived at the remote island, which took nearly a day to reach from the mainland. The island was depopulated, and about three thousand people lived there. I had visited the island once with my husband, and was captivated by its natural beauty and the slow flow of time. My husband promised that we would return to the island once his work was completed. I miss my husband, but maybe what I need now is the peace and quiet of that place. I quit my job and moved to this remote island a few months later after renting the house to someone else. It was a risky move on my part, but I knew I couldn't stay in my house any longer. I'm not sure how my husband paid off the mortgage, but I know he worked very hard. But there were too many memories to keep living alone in the house. However, I didn't want to waste my husband's efforts, so I didn't want to just let it go. There are many strange things, but I can't ask my husband about them anymore. I plan to spend time on this quiet island, relaxing and letting myself go. I began to adjust to island life and became acquainted with my neighbors. I had enough assets to live a normal life without working, but I realized that doing nothing was even more depressing. So I started working as a sort of helper, assisting the elderly neighbors with their problems. I was initially treated as an outsider, but as I became more used to the work, I was relieved to be accepted as one of the islanders. As I was settling in, I learned from a coworker that a new client had arrived from the main island for medical treatment. He had become ill and had chosen this island as his final residence, because there was no treatment available. Moving to this island with no medical facilities would be difficult, unless you are very prepared to move to this island in that condition. I was thinking that being in charge would be difficult when the new client asked for a visit, and I was the only one free. I had heard about his medical condition, so I was nervous as I went to his house. We arrived at the small house on a hill with a view of the ocean. The house had been vacant for a long time and had been renovated to the point where it was livable, but it was really just enough to keep the wind and rain out. I questioned whether this was the best place for him to spend his final days. With concern, I rang the doorbell. "Come in," a small voice said, barely audible. I gave my usual greeting and entered. I found my client sitting in front of a window, the sun and wind streaming in. I couldn't see his face because it was backlit, so I squinted as I approached. "It's a pleasure to meet you today, sir." As I looked at the face that I had turned to me, I was speechless. My husband, no, my ex-husband, sat there. We were both taken aback. We just stood there staring. My husband initiated the conversation. "You found me out," he said. He was mischievously smiling, like before. "What exactly are you doing here?" I was so confused by my husband's presence, the fact that he wasn't supposed to be there, as well as the information I had heard at work, that I couldn't speak properly. My husband grabbed my hand and forced me to sit next to him. He sat next to me and held my hand until I relaxed. I couldn't think of anything to say to him, and as I sat there, I heard a voice at the door. I wiped my tears and opened the door, where an elderly man stood. He seemed surprised to see my tear-stained face, but he bowed, went inside, and sat down next to my husband. "How are you doing today?" he inquired. He spoke in a soft voice. My husband said that there was nothing unusual and began chatting with him. The elderly man was most likely the island's only doctor. I remembered my colleagues telling me that there were no inpatient facilities on the island, and that the clinic nurse and doctor were the island's lifelines. So it appears that my husband came to the island to spend his final days here. 
Although it was his decision, I listened intently to their conversation. I was wondering if there was anything I could do to help. My husband's doctor left after about ten minutes of casual conversation. I couldn't help myself and ran after him. I guess my flustered appearance startled him again, but when I told him of our relationship, he seemed to understand. I questioned the doctor about my husband's condition and future treatment, but he said, "I can't tell you without his consent." Maybe he felt sorry for me and said, "He won't be able to walk by himself very soon. It seemed a shame for him to spend his final days alone. So please be there for him." I was stunned. What became of my husband's girlfriend? I returned back to the house. With heavy steps, where my husband was waiting, my husband appeared to have anticipated my questioning the doctor, and greeted me with a smile. "You're back." I couldn't leave without my husband, so I asked him to let me spend the night. My husband's house was only a few pieces of luggage and a couple of futons. It was the first time I'd slept with my husband since we discussed divorce. As I cuddled up under the covers with my husband, we told each other how we got here. I was eager to ask about his illness, but I decided that it wasn't time to talk about painful topics, so we reminisced. This was also due to my feelings about his relationship with her. I asked him if he hadn't brought her to the island before I asked to stay, but he just laughed and covered it up. The fact that he didn't say anything suggested that there was a sad event. I was careful not to hurt his feelings by asking any more questions. The next day, I informed my employer of what had occurred and decided to take some time off. I want to spend what time my husband had with him. I took my husband, who couldn't walk very far, around the island in a wheelchair. There were places I remembered from my previous visit, places and scenery I wanted to show him for the first time. It was satisfying just being together. I wish we'd been this close when we were married. Even after my divorce, I discovered that the feelings I had grew stronger. But there's nothing I could do about it now. My husband would be confused if I told him. Like friends, I would stay by his side. The good times were fleeting, but the disease was gradually taking its toll on my husband. His physical strength had deteriorated to the point where he could no longer go out or even take the long-awaited walks. Even daily tasks became difficult, and he began to doze off and fall asleep more frequently. The doctor came to see him every day, but the only relief was that he was no longer in pain. And I couldn't believe that this was natural, and that he would leave me so soon. I nursed my husband, never leaving his side for a second, so he wouldn't be alone when he awoke, which could happen at any time. Sometimes he'd wake up and tell me the rest of the dream he just awoke from, and other times he'd tell me about long ago memories, as if they just happened. I loved every moment, and this love exacerbated my sadness. My husband gradually stopped waking up after that. When we stopped talking, I stayed by his side, reading his favorite books and telling him about the sights and sounds I'd missed, so he could understand. I wanted to tell him about a beautiful sunset one day, so I held his hand and tried to speak to him. My husband's hand was cold to the touch. He was barely breathing, and his chest moved in an unnatural way. I panicked and called the doctor, who said he would be there right away. I waited for him, feeling as if my heart was being ripped out of my chest by the out of control situation. I hoped it was a misunderstanding. I wanted him to reassure me that everything would be fine. However, when the doctor arrived, he took a look and said, "His blood pressure has already dropped quite a bit. Let him go in peace." I believe he wants you to stay with him, so I'll sit this one out. Don't worry, I'll be right there if anything happens. So please stay by his side.
The doctor then said goodbye to my husband and walked out. So the time has come. I knew we would come, but it was unbearable. I was delighted to have met you. There were some challenges, but the truth is that I adore you. I held my husband's hand and whispered in his ear. Then my husband gently squeezed my hand back. It was medically impossible, but I clearly felt it. Soon after, he took his last breath and died quietly. I couldn't stop crying, but I was glad to have been there for him at the end. I was so busy after he had died that I didn't have time to mourn until after the burial. When I finally got home after cleaning up my husband's belongings, I noticed that mail had accumulated like a mountain. I was struck by the nostalgic handwriting I discovered as I went through them one by one. My husband had written dozens of letters. I wondered how long it had been since I had spent every day with him, trying to keep as close to him as possible. His letters started on the day of our reunion. My husband had moved here in the hope of seeing me again, but he didn't expect to actually find me here. It was difficult for him not to notice how surprised and delighted he was. It read, "I couldn't stop laughing at how funny my husband's letters were, and the fact that my husband felt that way was the best compliment he could have given me." The date on the letter indicated that he had been posting it every day, but his handwriting became more dirty, and the length of the letter became shorter as the days passed, clearly demonstrating the progression of his illness. With sadness, I continued reading, but my eyes stopped at one point. He had written the truth about our divorce. My husband's illness started during our marriage. When he discovered it, there was nothing they could do to help him, and the treatment he received as his last hope was ineffective and only had side effects. My husband made plans to divorce me because he didn't want me to spend the rest of my life with this disease, and I fell right into his trap. He had no idea I'd suspect the existence of another woman, but he didn't deny it because he thought he could give a lot of money to me as compensation. Because I no longer required medical treatment, I wanted to liquidate all of my assets so that you could live freely. He wrote. What hurtful words I'd hurled at my husband, who had thought that far from me. I sincerely apologized. Tears flowed uncontrollably. Then there was a knock on the front door. I wiped my tears quickly and opened the door to find my doctor standing there. What brings you here, doctor? I inquired. When I asked, he handed me a sealed envelope. The envelope was identical to the one I had just read from my husband. He asked me to post it every day. He wrote a few days' worth of letters before he fell into a coma, and he entrusted them to me. I couldn't refuse, and this is the last letter. He asked me to give it to you when you return to your home. So that's what this was about. This was my husband's final letter. I thanked the doctor and read my husband's letter alone. When I opened it quietly and calmly, I found a thin but clear note that said, "Thank you. I love you. We had come so far, but our hearts remain connected. I love you too." When I said this. I thought that I saw my husband's portrait's mouth smile a little. I am still living on this island, decades after my husband died. I am now officially recognized as an island resident. I built a grave next to where my husband's house used to stand, the day I was sure I'd never leave the island. My husband used to look out the window every day, and I'm sure he still does. I intend to join him there one day, and I am at peace and very happy to be surrounded by memories of my husband. Thank you for sticking with me until the end. I'll see you in the next video.